Hey, what's up guys? So, for those of you running a unit in R1 or R3 or the R7, Unit just released new update software for the R series. Now you're gonna be able to plug your detector into your computer and the update software is just gonna go out and check for any newer firmware updates. And if they're available, uh, it's just gonna go ahead and download them for you and copy them right over to your detector. And so now the update process is a lot simpler and smoother. And in this video, I wanna go over the whole update process, everything from uh, heading over to Unidin's website to go grab the update software. We'll go over how to install the software itself. This has actually been improved too. And then we're gonna go ahead and update a couple detectors here together. And down in the video description, I'll give you all the links you need, everything from uh, the links to where you can go grab the update software, uh, the discussion on the forums in case you run into any issues and need some help, as well as the links to where you can buy any of these detectors. And so with that said, let's go ahead and hop on over to the computer and walk through the whole process together. <laughs> All right, so uh, starting off, you're gonna to wanna to head over to Unidin's uh, support page here, support.unidin.com. Uh, and then there's gonna be two places that you can go to grab the updates. You can either go here to radar detectors or to downloads. I'll show you both of those because sometimes I know it gets a little confusing. Uh, we'll start here with uh, radar detectors, and then you're gonna to wanna to scroll down and go all the way down here to this uh, gray firmware button. Tap on that, and we've got a couple things listed here. So the main one we wanna take a look at is the new uh, R-Series update software. It's for the R-Series, so your R1, R3, and R7. Uh, it also says DFR9, but I tested it, it's not compatible with the DFR9, and so this is just for the, uh, the R-Series. You'll also notice uh, we've got the update software listed here. For the R7, it's showing 1.37. There actually is newer update software, 1.40, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, the website still needs to be updated here for this. Uh, and then the R1 and R3 current version is 1.54, but with the new update software, it's gonna go ahead and uh, uh, grab the latest version for you. Anyways, we'll go over here and you're gonna wanna go ahead and download uh, this new update software for the R series. Now the software, it's gonna allow you to upgrade or downgrade manually to any version that you want as well. Uh, there's a shortcut here to go to kind of the firmware uh, database for different detectors. Usually what people do though, is at the very top here, there's a button that says downloads, uh, and you can actually grab uh, different firmwares that you want specifically for your detector. So let's say you wanna grab the firmware update for the R7, for example, we'll punch in that and we'll hit search, and you can see we've got a bunch of different firmware versions that you can grab and download here. So the latest version is now 1.40, and this is now designed to be compatible with older and newer R7s, which I've covered uh, in a separate video. Now, you can download it here if you like, but again, the new update software, it's gonna take care of this for you. Next, you're gonna wanna head over to wherever you downloaded the update software to on your computer, usually a downloads folder or something, and you're gonna wanna unzip the uh, R series update software tool. Uh, we'll go into the folder here, and there's uh, three different things. Uh, one is just a simple manual that you can probably mostly skip. Uh, and then the other two options here are gonna be your uh, unit and update software, the MSI files for Windows. Uh, the package file here is for Mac. I'm doing the video on a Mac, so we'll go ahead and launch this, but the uh, update process, it's gonna be the same. So on a Mac, you do run into kind of this uh, safeguard thing. So if you run into this issue, you're gonna wanna go up to your uh, system preferences, and then there's gonna be an option here for security and privacy, tap on that. And then as you can see, it's not from an identified developer, so you're just gonna tell it to uh, open anyways and hit open. And now you're gonna be able to update the software. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. So we'll just go through the process, type in your password, okay? And it's gonna go ahead and update it. Now, the next step here is something I really like. It's gonna go ahead and launch the uh, installer to install the driver so that your computer knows how to talk to the detector. This used to be a separate step. A lot of people would skip it, and then they're like, why is it that I plug in my detector and my computer can't see it? Now it's gonna automatically go ahead and run the, uh, the driver installer as well, which is great. I'd love to see this. So it did the exact same thing on Windows too. So again, this process is the same. So agree. And then if you run into the same issue with stuff being blocked again, we're just gonna go back over here to your uh, security preferences, may have to unlock it. And then again, you're gonna wanna allow this uh, new driver to be installed. And then that should allow the, uh, the driver software to go ahead and finish up. Once you do, uh, the update software should be all done and there you go. Let's go into our applications and let's go to the uh, unit in R series update software tool. Now from here, you've got three different sections. Uh, this is gonna be kind of your main section uh, where it's gonna handle all the update stuff for you. Uh, the download file section, this is if you want to manually upgrade or downgrade to any version that you've grabbed on Unidin's website, uh, you can do that here. Uh, and then finally, you got a couple options. You can see like uh, the auto connect option is enabled by default, which I'll show you in just a second. And you also have a dark mode option if you'd like that too. But we're gonna head over here to the update option and we're gonna go ahead and plug in starting with an R7. And then once you do, uh, it should go ahead and show that you're now connected to the R7. It'll show you what detector you have plugged in, R7. Here's your uh, current 
firmware version that you have loaded, and here's the latest update that's available here uh, for your detector. Now, a quick note, when you plug in your detector, the display will not turn on. That's totally normal. Uh, you do not need to plug in a power cable into the detector. All you need to do is just plug it in with the USB cable. Then once you're ready, you just hit the uh, start update button and it's gonna go ahead and just grab the latest update for you. So let's see, update to check, I want this. Uh, we'll hit update and it's gonna go ahead and just run through the whole process for you. Now, what's nice about this is I don't have to go over to Uniden's website, go find the new update software, uh, download it to my computer, manually load it into the update software. Like the update software itself checked for the newer firmware version, downloaded it for me, and then I just said, yes, go ahead and install it. So that's a really nice change here just to make this process easier. So it's finishing up doing the uh, GPS database as well for the red light cameras in addition to the firmware, and there we go, now we're done. So we hit okay, it's gonna recheck my detector, and boom, I now have version 1.40 loaded. Awesome, that took like a minute, that was great to see. Now, if at any point you want to manually upgrade or downgrade versions, you can just do the same process before where you download uh, the update file off Unit's website and you can just load it in here. You don't have to do every version in between where you are now and where you're eventually gonna go. You can just jump straight to any version, uh, newer or older. Next, I wanna plug in an R3 real quick and we've got it connected here. Here you can see I've got the latest firmware already loaded in, 1.54, but there's a newer GPS database than uh, what I have loaded here in my detector. So let's try this, not updating the firmware, but just the GPS database. So it's gonna check, here's the latest version, we'll hit update, and as you can see, it's just gonna load in the GPS database. So again, it can check for both your uh, firmware updates as well as the GPS database for your speed cameras and red light cameras. Okay, update completed. And there we go, we're done. Now we've got the latest software here on the R3. Now for kicks, we can do a unit in R1 next. Uh, as you can see, again, we've got the latest firmware update loaded and there's no uh, GPS database here because it's a non-GPS detector. So just for the sake of maybe thoroughness, we'll start this. And as you can see, it's gonna check for the latest update and it says, well, there's no updates available. And so this option here is actually grayed out, which is awesome. You could do this recovery mode option if you have any issues uh, and actually force an update onto the detector and just kind of reflash it. So that is available, but otherwise this option is gonna be grayed out. And that I guess is another confirmation to let you know there's new or no new uh, update software available here for the detector. Next, I'm gonna try plugging in a unit in DFR9. And as I mentioned earlier, it's not compatible with this update software. You can see it trying to read the detector, but you just get this weird kind of blinky thing. And so I know the website says that it's also compatible with the DFR9, but uh, it's not actually in practice. So yeah, there you go. That's the process. Just grab the update software off Unit's website, install it on your computer, uh, plug the detector into the computer, and the update software just kind of takes care of the rest, which is really nice. Uh, in case you run into any issues, I really hope you don't. I mean, I know there's been a lot of issues in the past with the previous version of the update software. If you do run into issues, I want you to get the help that you need, but just remember, I'm not tech support. <laughs> so in case you run into issues, I'll put a link in the video description to the uh, discussion area on the forums where we're all just kind of discussing about this mentioning kind of how our experiences are going, and that's gonna be the best place to discuss all this stuff. Uh, additionally, down there, I'll have links to uh, where you can download the update software, uh, links to where you can purchase the detectors, links to where you can pick up the uh, different USB cables in case you don't have one. Different detectors use different USB cables, so in case you don't have one, I'll drop a link down there to where you can pick those up too. So anyway, yeah, that's just a quick look here at this new uh, update software for the Uniden R-Series detectors. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you, Uniden, for addressing one of the biggest complaints that I've had with the detectors, and it's been a source of headaches. So I'm really, really glad to see that this has uh, finally been addressed. Um, oh, and I guess maybe one thing last to mention real quick, Uniden R7 firmware version 1.40. I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask about that. 1.40 was originally designed as kind of the new firmware update for the newer versions of the R7s that have new hardware, part shortages, they had to replace some of the components. Performance is the same, features are the same, it's just different components requires a different uh, hardware version. Um, people have actually loaded in 1.40 now on their older versions of the R7 and that's no longer causing issues. And the reason that's happening is now moving forward, all versions of the R7 uh, are gonna have the same uh, firmware file and the same firmware version. And so you're gonna be able to just grab the firmware file, according to what Unit has told me, uh, and just load it into your detector. And this new update software actually takes into account which hardware version of the R7 that you have, so it knows kind of how to actually handle the firmware update process. The previous version of the update software did not take into account different hardware versions of different detectors because it didn't exist at the time. And so that's also kind of one of the changes under the hood uh, for this new update software. And so 1.40 is functionally identical to 1.37. So if you're upgrading from an older R7 that has 1.37, newer R7s come preloaded with 1.40. If you're upgrading an older detector from 1.37 to 1.40, there's zero difference. Same features, same 
performance, same, literally everything. They're just kind of catching up the firmware version number of the older R7 so that it matches the newer R7s. And so everything moving forward will be exactly the same. So uh, I know people are going to mention that. I just wanted to uh, address that real quick too. So anyway, that's it for now. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're all doing great. And I'll see you in the next video.